Hi, I'm Aisha Khader and this is PCR Online. We are coming to you live from the ESC Congress 2023 in Amsterdam. And today I have the pleasure of speaking with Professor Barbara Staley from University Hospital Zurich. Welcome, Professor Staley. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. You presented yesterday the results of the Multistar AMI trial. Could you tell us a bit about the background of the study? Yeah. So Multistar's army was an international open-label non-inferiority randomized trial of uh, immediate versus stage devascularization of non-culprit lesions in STEMI patients with multivessel coronary disease. And why did we do this trial? Uh, we know that about half of patients with STEMI present with multivessel uh, coronary disease. These patients are at increased risk and we know from studies such as COMPLETE that complete rescization of these patients is superior to culprit lesion only PCI. But the optimal timing in STEMI patients have not been, not been investigated and that's why we designed the multistar summit that's, trial. That's great. It's very important to designate the timing in terms of when the complete revascularization should be done. So could you tell us a bit more about the design and also we know this was designed in a non-inferiority uh, margin manner. Why non-inferiority and also a little bit more about how you designed it? Yeah, so I start with the non-inferiority trial uh, design. Um, complete showed that a complete revascularization of uh, non-culprit lesions is superior to a uh, culprit lesion only PCI. In complete, the benefits were observed irrespective, irrespective of the timing of non-culprit lesion PCI, so whether this was done during the index hospitalization or afterwards within 45 days. But incomplete, all procedures were staged procedures, so no immediate complete rescization procedures. And uh, Multistars was designed to investigate whether immediate uh, rescization of non-culprit lesions is non-inferior to, to staged. All right, so you randomize patients one is to one to get the procedure during the index STEMI itself versus yeah. later yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. So patients with STEMI, acute STEMI, presenting within 24 hours of, from symptom one set and multivessel disease. This was uh, defined by the coronary angiogram as at least one non-culprit lesion with at least 70% diameter stenosis. Um, these patients were included. They needed to have successful primary PCI, of course, and needed to be in stable hemodynamic um, conditions. And then they were uh, randomized in a one-to-one -one ratio to either a strategy of immediate uh, multivessel PCI, so directly in the same procedure following the primary PCI, or um, a strategy of staged uh, PCI of non-culprit lesions performed within 19 to uh, 45 days after the index procedure. Um, a variable saluting stent was recommended for PCI. Of course, all patients received uh, guideline-directed medical therapy. And the primary endpoint is then assessed at one year. It was a composite endpoint of all cause death, non fatal myocardial infarction, stroke, unplanned ischemia driven revascularization, and hospitalization for heart failure. Right, thank you. And how about what were the patient characteristics like in terms of the disease pattern of multivessel disease? And also, maybe you could elaborate on the results of the trial. Yeah. So we excluded, of course, patients with cardiogenic shock, patients with left main disease, patients with previous cabbage, patients with uh, stent thrombosis, instant restenosis, uh, chronic total occlusion, so we didn't include these patients uh, in the trial. Uh, when we have a look at the baseline characteristics of our patients in the study, the median age was about 65 years. They were 80% male, as always in our cardiovascular <laughs> trials. Um, they were 15% diabetic, about 50% hypertension. And 80% had two vessel disease, 20% triple uh, vessel disease, and we ha need now to have, of course, a close look at the the uh, extent and complexity of coronary artery disease. This is ongoing now in in sub studies. So this was the patient population of multistars army, and it's important also to say that they are in were in um, stable hemodynamic conditions. So. STEMI with uh, multivessel disease and stable hemodynamic conditions. That's interesting that you're also going to look at the subsets given that 80% had double vessel disease and the rest of them had triple vessel disease. Okay, we can tell us about the results now. Yes, now we come to the yes. results. So multistars could show that immediate uh, PCI of non-culprit lesions is non-inferior to staged uh, PCI of non-culprit lesions with a risk ratio of 0.52. 
um, when we have a look at the absolute event rates, the primary endpoint occurred in 8.5% of the patients in the immediate PCI group and in 16.3% of the patients in the staged um, uh, PCI group. So a clear uh, result with a P a value for non-inferiority below 0.0001. And when we have a look at the individual uh, components of the primary endpoint, we saw that immediate uh, PCI of non-culprit lesions was associated with lower rates of non-fatal myocardial infarction and lower rates of unplanned ischemia-driven revascularization. What we also saw is that the uh, total amount of contrast agent used was lower, the total fluoroscopy times so or radiation exposure was uh, lower um, and of course you have uh, additional benefits you just have one procedure so That's no second right. hospitalization the overall hospital stay was shorter and no need for second uh, tubal puncture so this could probably also have or will have impacts on in, in terms of uh, resources and, and no, costs. Absolutely. Do you have a cost-effective analysis being planned as well? As it's planned, of? yeah. That's great. <laughs> we look forward to that. And I just wanted to touch on this double versus triple vessel disease. Just to clarify for the audience, if, if in the case of triple vessel disease, when you did the non-culprit, would you do both the remaining vessels? Yes. All yes. right. Okay. So it was really um, immediate complete versus stage complete, right. okay. but we really have to, to have a close look at these patients because yes. these were uh, are mostly more complex patients and then we have also always to consider um, uh, discussing these patients with our colleagues from uh, cardiac surgery in, yes. in a heart team discussion, so I think there are a lot of questions um, that we still need to answer in this interesting field. That's true. I think the sub-studies and the results coming out of it will be even more interesting to look at, and this fits in very nicely with the ACS guidelines that were presented yes. on the first day of this Congress. So yes. congratulations again, and thank you very much for Thank you so much us. for having me. Thanks. Thank you.